Notion has become my number one productivity tool for good reason. Once you pass the initial learning curve, it becomes a fully customizable personal productivity system. However, from the moment I started creating Notion templates and video content back in 2020, the Notion community has been finding creative ways to solve one fundamental missing part in our Notion productivity systems that has never been fully supported. A automated way to track habits directly in Notion and recurring tasks. Well, Notion HQ just took a huge step closer to giving us fully functional recurring tasks with their new recurring database template feature. And it offers a lot of other very exciting opportunities. This is how I'm using them, so you can too. And thank you to Skillshare, my favorite place to upskill, for sponsoring a portion of this video. Hi, it's Simon. Today, I want to show you some pretty excellent ways to use recurring templates in 2023 to improve our Notion task managers, habit trackers, and daily workflow. First, we'll look at recurring tasks using the basics of the database template feature, but I'm actually really excited about my second example, a new automated way to track habits directly in Notion. It's my daily tracker that I will be building in a future template build for 2023. So make sure to subscribe here and join my mailing list for more on that soon. Oh, and for those of you waiting for parts three and four of my Notion from scratch task manager build, it is coming soon. Since this update and a number of others turned up from Notion since I made the first two, I decided to hold off and make sure it's fully up to date with those new features. Let's get organized. Okay, let's talk about basics. How to use recurring database templates for recurring tasks. First, to access this new feature, just click onto the arrow next to the blue new button on any database view and use or create a new database template. Click on the three dots and we now have this new option called repeat with options to repeat daily, weekly, monthly or yearly. Also setting the time we do it within them. Now, most pleasingly though, is that the weekly option tab also offers the ability to pick specific days over that week. And this is the true unlock for a recurring task or habit tracking system. So first let's create a new template and format it as a recurring task. So I'm going to code the look of my recurring tasks so I can recognize it has been generated as a recurring one using these new icon options Notion have added for database items. Really good news. This is great for using a consistent symbolic code through your workspace. And on that note, I'm looking forward to integrating my custom icon pack into my templates and into this area soon. So watch this space. What's great is that by editing a database template page, you can format it and populate it with anything you want. And each time it is generated, the same content will appear. A great example of this is how I use it for quickly creating pre-formatted project pages in my task manager, including filtered views of tasks that will be related to that project within the page. Cool, right? It's also a simple way to just aesthetically set the look of every new page you generate if you just want to use it like that. Great if you use custom icons, for example, like I might be in my habit tracker here. Here's how to use the recurring template feature. Let's demo a recurring task then. So for this recurring task, I will pre-link it to its related project, select the days I want to do it on. The main issue will be that we still want to be able to populate a calendar view with this method, but for ensuring a couple of key tasks always turn up in your to-do list, it's great. There are, however, a couple of things we can do to make it work really well. Add a date created column that will be useful in a bit. I also recommend creating a kind of recurring template template. So duplicate one you've already made and label it as a template. And for now, this will be a quick way for us to create more recurring tasks within the tab. Now, before we move on to habit tracking, what I think is the real promising use case for this new update, I want to make sure that the generated recurring tasks still show up properly with a due date in my task lists, given that they are currently sorted by a date. I set for them. And there is in fact a way to do this using a formula and a little adjustment to the page. Let me show you how. Now, one of the main problems we have with these recurring templates for recurring tasks is let's say we create a sales email. It won't have a due date because if you put the due date in now, it will stay the same. And when it's generated, it won't have the right date. And I manage everything on a calendar. So there are two options to solve this. One is you could just create a text box and write into it like this at today. 
and you'll see here you have the option of when duplicated. So that would mean that I can then create in, let's say, a do today view, a filter where it's either that the due date is on or before today or recurring contains at today. That's the really simple way to make sure that a today view would turn up. Pretty cool, look, there you go. It doesn't have a due date, but it has turned up in there. And again, you can check it off like you would anything else. However, I think there's an even better option than that. If we go down to here, in my tasks database, I've added a due date formula. So this formula works like this. It's a simple if statement. So if the due on date is empty, which it would be with a recurring generated task, propose the created time. So you need to create a created time column. Otherwise, use the due date. So it's a kind of like fail safe. It means that a date will always appear there. And then all you would do is where my views for my tasks, like this task list, used to be grouped by the due date. All I'm now doing is I'm actually changing the group to the due date formula. I can hide the no due date formula. And there you go, it works exactly the same. Now the good advantage of this one is it drops it in, it leaves it empty, but if you then wanted to move it along and go, actually, I don't want to do it today, I'm going to do it tomorrow, it will move it down and it will suddenly just become part of the normal system. And it would mean that you wouldn't have a kind of messed up to do list because obviously it's still there. Now I've moved it, it's still in that list. So I would propose that second option is a great option. So if you want to put this into your system, just add a new column, go to formula, you can create it. I'm going to delete this one because I've made one already. And the formula is simply this. So you can copy this down yourself if you want to and just name it the same as your columns are named. Make sure you've added that created time column. You won't need to see that because it will work by it. So I'm just going to hide it. I strongly believe we are still waiting on recurring tasks from Notion because A, they want to get it right and B, the ability to offer both reliable and intuitive recurring functions is harder than it might look when you're also looking to keep the customizability of the workspace. We've all tried everything from moving to Todoist, coming back and using third-party integrations like Zapier or Bedean.ai using the API. So until Notion complete on their journey of offering us fully integrated recurring task support in the calendar, I think this one is the best yet. Now, before we dive into our recurring habit tracker ideas, if you want to go deeper with mastering simple, usable approaches to personal productivity, I recommend checking out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore creativity and personal growth on their own terms. And I really recommend starting out with one of my favorite classes on the platform, which is Thomas Frank's class called Mastering Productivity, Create a Custom System That Works. It's a great overview of the actions, strategies and areas you can focus on to get your personal organisation up to scratch and was a treasure trove of tools, say that in a hurry, to help me start making my daily life a little bit easier. In fact, some of my favourite Notion productivity builds have been inspired by ideas I've discovered on Skillshare. So if you have like a specific skill you're trying to learn, it's the perfect place to start. I've been using it endlessly at the moment from productivity and entrepreneurship to creative writing, film and video. You can find classes that will match all of your goals and interests. So give them a try, I reckon. The first 1,000 people using my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Personally, I just can't get enough of it. Okay, part two, and what I'm most excited about, using these recurring templates for a daily habit tracker. Here are two great things about this for habit tracking. Number one, we can now automate a daily log entry to generate every day natively in Notion. This means that even if we don't fill it in, there will be a record. Great, therefore, for calculating and tracking progress because you'll have the full set. And number two, if we use Notion's new database icon feature, we can create a simple, good-looking set of habits to track within a single daily log page. This will mean that you will have a record of when each column is checked so that you can then roll them up into yearly, monthly reporting views, even weekly reporting views to see your progress. Let me show you a little taster of how it works. And I'm using this as the basis for my 2023 Complete Life OS templates. Let's take a look. Okay, so I'll use this daily log as my demonstration for it. If we go into the home screen, this is what we're gonna build. So we create a recurring today entry into the tracker which repeats every day. 
There is the option to go weekly and do one for a Monday, which might have certain bits of journaling or information in it that you need. And it might be a different type of entry which has other stuff in the pages for Friday. But I'm gonna keep mine really simple and just make it daily. So let's jump to my little demo version. What you're gonna do is first of all, create a little database inline. We'll call this the daily tracker. So first of all, I'm gonna change the tags to mood. Why not? And then you can do like, fine. That's how I feel today. I'm gonna to then add a series of checkboxes. And into those checkboxes, what's great is now we can use icons to define them. I'm gonna call it running. And these are gonna be your habits. Now the great thing is we can now do that. So that's why this icon has really transformed this option as well. So I'm gonna make a few more as some examples very quickly now. Okay, so let's say I wanted to run, journal, and create something each day. Now, you don't absolutely have to do all of these, but the point is, is that we're going to go over to the new and we're going to add a new template from scratch. We're gonna call this, most importantly, at today. Now you'll see two options come up again, date when duplicated, we're gonna click that, and that means that every time it's duplicated, it will list today's date, fantastic. I'm gonna add my default icon that I want, since it's a habit tracker, I'm gonna make it a tick, I'm gonna add a cover, and I keep that cover really simple. I'm just gonna type in white. We now know that if we go in, set it to repeat every day, as I would usually leave it at the start of my day, so it's always there, it's gonna turn up. Let's just call this one at today as an example. So you would just journal away and create things and so on and so forth. So once set to repeat, the daily log entry will appear in the database and I can create a filtered gallery view for today on my main dashboard by filtering where the created time is today. Now, the other essential thing you're gonna need in here is a created time. We're gonna add a new property, created time, that's essential so that you're able to search and reference from it. And the other thing that I've done in mine is this, a month formula. So I'm gonna do that quickly in hours. Rename this one, date created. And we're gonna create a formula. And we're gonna do format date, select that. Propose, date created, comma, open the parentheses, three months, another one, and close it, and it tells you the month. Rename it, we can give it a little icon. We can then roll up the results into monthly and yearly databases. I'm currently building this out into my template for 2023. Now the power of this is that you can roll things up into it, journal entries, you can see a bullet point list. And here, using that month formula, I can then filter and group so I filtered here by the year being this one, and I've grouped it by the month formula over here. So we then have month views of everything that's going on and everything we have tracked. Really, really cool. Do make sure to be subscribed on the channel if you're not. I really recommend definitely going over to bettercreating.com to join my Notion from Scratch email list and to find that build along series that helps you learn the fundamentals of Notion as we go. I'll be sharing more about this approach to recurring tasks and tracking later in 2023. And of course you can find my Notion templates over there as well. And if this is getting you excited to go further with using Notion, like I am here to fully organize your life, you should definitely watch this video next for how and why you might want to use Notion as a second brain. And this one for my favourite productivity essentials to simplify your life. Drop a like and a comment and I'll see you on the next one.